Hey guys, welcome back to VR Essentials. Today, very cool video as I'm going to be doing the ultimate graphic settings guide of 2023 for the Pimax Crystal, everybody, which will probably run into 2024, I would imagine. Now, even though I'm using the RTX 2070, you can use this video as a base case for your 3000 or 4000 series. We will be using Automobilista 2 or AMS2 as the actual app we're using, as during the live stream that I did previously, it wasn't working. And this was because of OBS. Unfortunately, it created some issues which made it impossible to run the app whilst I was actually live streaming. So I can't live stream anymore using the Pimax Crystal. So I wanted to do a graphics guide for you guys to help you and also to show you that, of course, there are no issues whatsoever when you're using an RTX 2070. And if you're not using, of course, the uh, OBS software or perhaps other software that you may have open on your computer as well. Now, I did a full charge of the battery, FOI. I charged it for a good four hours, by the way, so we shouldn't have any issues. And do smash the notification bell after you subscribe, guys, as I'll do separate videos for foveate rendering and also for battery usage, battery length time, all these kind of different things. So yeah, make sure you do that. Now, in today's video, do watch until the end, as I mentioned, because we will be show I will be showing you, excuse me, some live footage, gameplay and everything. But also, we're going to go through the NVIDIA settings, the in-game settings. I'm going to show you some overclocking settings too. Although, do be careful. Don't overclock your machine unless you know what you're doing. Or if you have a professional or someone who knows what they're doing to help you as you can damage your computer. So, we're also going to do it at 90 hertz, 120 hertz. And we're going to press every single button on and off inside of the Pimax software too. I think you're going to be very surprised, guys. So the results of today's video. All right, guys, without further ado, are you ready? Let's hop into VR. Let's go. So guys, don't forget to enable your software for the actual wheel before you start the game. Otherwise, you will have some problems. Maybe your wheel won't work and all these kind of different things. And by the way, I am running at 100% on the video settings for the super sampling inside of Steam VR itself. So it's going to be very interesting to see how everything reacts, of course. All right. And of course, remember to turn on your wheel also so that you don't have any issues whatsoever. As you can see, it's switched on. So I'm using the next level racing gig, by the way. Racing rig, excuse me, racing stand 2.0 with a Logitech G923. At 100% uh, 100 video settings, by the way, I do get some blinders on the side. So unfortunately, it means I need to bring it down because I'm using an RTX 2070. So I'm going to have to exit uh, SteamVR and just bring it maybe to 80% and just do a testing there. Let's just exit the game. So now all I need to do is go to click on home, video settings, go to auto MVD set 2. And then I'm just going to bring it down to maybe around 80%, 82%. All right, it should be okay at 82%. Close, there we go. Return to home. And then let's go and auto register to again and launch it once more. I still have the things on the side, to be honest with you. So much less than just now, but let's, let's, uh, let's exit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of the settings of uh, auto register to itself. Okay, let's go to options, let's go to performance. So texture resolution, okay. Any isotropic, I think I will put it on four. Uh, and then a multi-sampling, I will put on medium, I guess. Or the multi-sampling, I do want to leave it on high as much as possible. Environment map also, maybe car detail, I'll put on low. And then uh, shadow detail, I'll put maybe on low also. Uh, render frames, I'll put I'll put on, I like to leave it on two if possible. I'm still getting the blinders on the side. So what I need to do is go back into my Steam VR once more, go to video settings uh, and then bring it down. We're going to bring it down this time to about 70, 72%, which will be 2904 by 3436, 68%, 2020, 2820 by 33 by 36. Okay, and I need to exit Steam, of course, because it doesn't reset automatically. So we need to exit the game. Okay, so much less now, much better, but I'm still getting them a little bit on the side. So I think I'll go back again to Steam VR Home, go to video settings. I'm almost there. So 68%, so we can bring it down to most probably 64 or 60%, 64. Okay, I'll bring it to 58, which is 2604 by 30, 
84, all right, but we're back inside of Automobilista 2, so I'm just going to change the car once more. We're now at 64% on the actual Steam VR. Much better, although still still getting the, black, the blinders on the side. So uh, I'm just going to stop the recording now and uh, see potentially what else is going on. Even though the uh, graphics are pretty good, I have to say everything is super sharp and clear. Um, you know, it would be good to have a VR experience where I really do not have any whatsoever blinders when I'm moving my head because I don't want anything to be occurring uh, during the gameplay whatsoever. So let's go back into the software. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of the actual software itself. So let me just uh, bring that down. There we go. Let me just... And uh, also end task for uh, Steam and Steam VR. also. Uh, we're going to go inside of the actual device settings itself. All right, guys, so for the settings, what we're going to do is we're going to put the refresh rate at 90 hertz because 120 hertz, I believe, can have some issues. Uh, and then for the rest, I'm not really going to change it. I'm going to leave render quality to balanced. I'm going to fix for fix forward rendering. I'm going to keep it off for now. Uh, smart smoothing is supposed to predict tracking data and the video feed of the headset. The refresh rate can be improved by frame interpolate, interpolation. Excuse me. Uh, and then hidden area mask. Uh, this is to prevent pixels that are usually not visible due to barrier distortion from rendering, hence improving performance may cause abnormal, uh, abnormal visual artifacts, apparently. So do be aware of this. And then for the contrast and all this other stuff, I'm going to leave at default. So basically not changing anything in the general. I'm just going to leave home to off. Um, also, do make sure you update your HMD. Uh, maybe update your controllers as well if it's required. Uh, for me, for example, you know, no update is uh, required at this moment in time. Firmware log, I switch off because I don't want things to be running in the background. Uh, and then also in advanced, I will turn off the auto lens settings. Um, and then also for local dimming, I would just put to to balance and you know leave it as that basically. So we just close it. Then we start Steam VR. And then we'll go back inside of Virtuality where I will see you. All right, guys, so we're loading the game once more. And uh, we're still at 64% on SteamVR, by the way. But as I mentioned now, we're running at 90 hertz. So let's see what is the difference because 120 hertz is still experimental for the Pimax F4i. All right. Now, no blinders. No, no blinders. It's more or less, more or less good now. So much better than it was before yeah no blinders i can confirm so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into steam vr so i'm going to exit the game again and now what i'm going to do is even though you can't see anything on the screen most probably i'm going to up the super sampling of uh the game itself so we can increase the settings now i'm going to crank it up to about 72 percent and see i'm going to crank it up all the way back to 100 percent in fact and also of course you can enable motion smoothing just foi so i'm going to enable it for for this game so let's see what happens as we're running at 90 hertz this time guys and just previously in fact we were at 54 percent yep i have no oh i have some blinders i do have some blinders but it's much better than it was before i have to say even at 100 percent yeah it is much better 70 percent i think would be absolutely fine absolutely reasonable to be honest with you so i'm gonna leave the settings as is now i'm gonna exit the game once more and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the Pimax software and just turn a couple things off and see the difference. So guys, we're going back inside of the software now. We're going to go to the actual Pimax itself uh, to turn off some of the options. So let me just uh, get rid of some of the things here. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off Smart Smoothing. We're going to reset everything, retry everything and see how things go. So let's just click on Apply. There we go. And then before we start, uh, once more, I just want to double check something in terms of the actual resolution of the headset to make sure that we put it uh, to the right resolution. So uh, Pimax crystal resolution per eye is 2080 by 28. So 2880 by 2880 per eye, guys. So do make sure that inside of your Steam VR, you, of course, um, we'll do that also because otherwise when you go into your video settings then if it's much bigger than this then you know you may also get some performance issues unless of course um, your you know your computer can can take it of course and then we need to go back to uh, games 
and then switch off smart smoothing as this seems to have caused some issues uh, when I get the blinder. So I'm going to switch this off for sure. And then what I'm going to turn on now is I'm going to turn on the fixed foveated rendering. Yeah, let's just see what happens when we put when we turn on the fo fixed foveated rendering. So let's apply, and then we're going to restart the service. So what's going to happen is the Pimax is going to switch off automatically. It's going to disconnect, then it's going to reconnect, and we're also going to restart the headset just to be sure. And then what we can do now is we can go to there you go. So it says disconnected. So it's all calibrated, so no excuses. And we just click on Steam VR, and then what will happen now is that Steam will automatically start once more. And then you'll see it in the actual headset itself. So see you back in Automobile Set 2 after the changes that we just made, which include, as I mentioned before, if you go to games, uh, we put the render quality to balanced, we left it to balanced, excuse me, fixed foveated, fixed foveated rendering, we put to balanced, and then also we switched off smart smoothing. So let's go. All right, so we're back inside of Automobilista 2. It's loading now and uh, we're still at around 70% of course after all the changes. Yep, I still have the blinders on the side. So definitely not, not great for me in terms of having foveated rendering. Doesn't seem to be making that, different, that much difference. And also when I go up and down, I can see the black things on the side. So definitely having some uh, some issues there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back inside of uh, automobile set to sorry i'm going to exit automobile set to although i'm going to go to the video settings very quickly uh yeah so we are uh, and also do remember that we're supposed to be at 2880 by 2880 all right guys so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go inside of my graphics card uh settings all right so it's just loading as you can see we're going to go to user mode and to be honest with you, it kind of seems to have been overclocked already to the maximum that I could potentially bring it to. But we can, of course, always do a little bit of boosting. So let me just boost it up a little bit. There we go to 1912. And for the memory, let's just boost it up a little bit to maybe 17 or 16. Uh, let me click on apply and then hopefully, my, of course, my computer will completely be completely okay. There we go. So we're gonna to go to the MSI afterburner as well. Overclock it a little bit as well on here too. So the core clock is at plus 211. I'm gonna bring it up to plus 293. And then for the memory, it's at 1199. We're gonna bring it up to about 1300. There we go. Our core degrees, of course, you need to watch this, is 54, 55 degrees at the moment. So let's click this. Let's see what happens in terms of temperature. So we're at 1410 by 8310 now megahertz. So after overclocking the PC, as you can tell, it's running at 4.57 gigahertz, 57 gigahertz, excuse me, and most likely will run all the way to 5 gigahertz after overclocking it. Now, do be very careful when you're overclocking. Don't overdo it. Do it very slowly. Make sure you do it by a professional or do it if you know what you are doing as you don't want to break your machine, of course. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's now what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside of actual Steam VR and set things up. Okay, so we're back inside of Automobile Set 2. Now we made all the changes to the overclocking. However, I left the foveated rendering to balanced and uh, we are at around 66% on the video settings of my SteamVR video. So now it's already much, much better, I have to say. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there, I have to admit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, I mean, it's super, super clear, super sharp. Everything is really good. Uh, still getting a tiny bit of blinders when I'm moving my head, especially left to right. And then the other side, yep, also getting a little bit of blinders. So what we're going to do is just as a final test, because we don't need to crank up the settings of the uh, overclocking anymore, to be honest with you, this does not need to be required. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the exit the game. We're going to go back into the settings. Texture res resolution for me is quite important to leave this to high. However, the multi sampling, maybe I could put it to medium, although I really do prefer to leave this to high, to be honest with you. And also the environment map, I, le I like to leave this to high. Track detail, I'll put it on medium, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
go into the Fovea rendering settings of the actual app itself and see whether it makes any difference if we switch it off. All right, guys, so we're back inside of the Pimax. Let's go to device settings. Let's go to games, uh, fix foveated rendering. Let's turn this off, change things. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to bring the render quality down to minimum. And then we'll see whether actually it makes a lot of differences inside of the VR headset, because then what I could do is go to the Steam VR settings and, you know, of course, apply a higher resolution over there instead of doing it here inside of the actual, uh, you know, the actual headset itself. So let's just apply this first. Apply success. There we go. We're going to restart the service. And then restart the headset once you're done with that as well, just to be on the safe side. So once more, we are back in AMS2 now that we put the rendering quality to minimum. And now I have no blinders on the side. Everything is great. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Steam VR because the actual quality for me right now are actually, I would say, pretty much the same as what it was earlier, although maybe there are some loss Loss of graphics, I would say, at the further at the background. More flickering going on over there for sure, I would say. So what we'll do is we're going to go to the actual Steam VR settings now. So guys, I'm just going back inside of the video settings here. And then we're going to crank it up to 152%, where it will be 2760 by 3268 as when I put it to... 100% because I changed the, the rendering quality inside of the hardware. Now the 100% is no longer the same as what it was before. So we're going to bring it up to 150%, which is more or less where it was at the beginning. Let me just close this. Let me go to exit game. We're going to go back to the uh, home of Steam VR. All right, so now we're running AMS2 at 150%, but it's, as I mentioned before, because I cranked up cranked down the settings inside of the hardware it is not 150 percent of what it was at the beginning we're actually running at two let me just uh, just recap at what we're running at let me go to the video settings very quickly ms2 so we're running at 2760 by 3268 pixels per eye guys so it's closest as possible as well, I could get it to 2880 per eye. I have very slight blinders, I have to say. So already, it's much, much better by cranking down the rendering inside of the software itself and then cranking it up inside of the actual super sampling. Now I have all the detail that I need at the back of the headset itself. Uh, that means in the background, uh, you know, there isn't that much, uh, you know, things that are basically jittery or flickery i mean i still have some flickering but that's because of the graphics card but at the end of the day my graphics now are much more comfortable at the background i can see much more clear pretty much everything now so now i would say that i'm ready to play in fact even though i still have some blinders here and there it doesn't really disturb me so what i could actually do also many loads there we go let me go back let me go to options performance and then we're going to crank up the anisotropic to eight percent and let me see what else. The trunk detail I could put to high this time and see what happens. Shadow detail, I'll leave it to medium. And render frame rates, I could even put it to... I'll leave it to two for now because I think this is something that two should be more than enough. In fact, any so tropic, we could put it to 16 and just see what happens. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty good. I have to admit, although it hasn't really made that much of a difference in terms of the graphics quality bumping up the track detail maybe it's done it slightly perhaps i'm not quite sure doesn't feel like the differences are super super high to be honest with you all right guys so we're back inside of the pimax software once more let's go to device settings here all right so we just turned on smart smoothing that's basically all we're going to do i'm going to apply that i'm going to restart the service once more uh, then also I will restart the headset just to be sure as well. And then while, whilst it's doing that, guys, I just want to show you something. Also, if you have the option inside of your graphics card, uh, do also make sure that you, let me just close this up, uh, that when you go to virtual reality variable rate super sampling, put it on adaptive, virtual pre-reality rendered frames, you can put it on two here. 
uh, although I'll put mine on three. Um, and then make sure to turn everything off. Uh, so for example, sharpening is off, ambient occlusion off. I mean, all these different things, anti-aliasing, gamma correction. In fact, uh, you could put this on off as well. Um, and then also application control, anti-aliasing, transparency. In fact, you could leave this on off as well because it's not going to make a difference uh, in terms of the actual, uh, you know, the, the graphics card itself. So again, super sampling, 2x, can't change this, okay. Um, so, you know, all these kind of things are not going to make a difference inside of VR. It only makes a difference really more for, let's say, uh, when you're using your actual screen itself. Just FYI, except for the virtual reality things, although the virtual sync, by the way, guys, you do want to make sure that this is off for virtual sync though, uh, otherwise you will have problem for sure. Let me just click on apply, there we go, and make sure that my virtual sync is switched off. Yes, it is now, okay, all good. Um, so yeah, so that's basically my settings inside of the actual managed 3D section of the NVIDIA graphics card, everybody. So now everything is reset, let's start SteamVR once more. All right guys, so we're back inside of AMS2 here with all the changes that we just applied. Also, of course, we put render three, render frame to three for uh, inside of the NVIDIA card as well. Turned off virtual sync as well. Uh, we're at 12 on the anisotropic uh, settings as we, as I just showed you in the settings I just did with a track set to high. And uh, yeah, I have no, no blinders, pretty much no blinders on the side. So we're really getting to something uh, much, much more comfortable now in terms of the settings, in terms of the, the you know, everything that I see around me. Um, I'm just going to bring back the anisotropic to maybe 8, because I don't think 12 really makes, or 16, doesn't really make that much of a difference, to be honest with you, on my graphics card right now. I can't really see it. Um, so I'm going to bring this back to 8, and I think for the track, the track detail, I'm going to put this on medium because it doesn't, again, make that much difference. And I think for the shadow detail, I'm going to bring it on low also because it doesn't really seem to make that much of a huge difference. And uh, yeah, because the render frame rate on the VR card is 3, I'm going to be on 3 here just to make sure it's consistent. So yeah, pretty much no blinders on the side, just a little bit, a tiny, teeny bit, in fact. So I could bring it down to let's say, you know, a, a, few, a few percent, maybe 5%, but because it doesn't really disturb me, to be honest, um, I'm going to leave it, because unless I'm moving really, really fast, I don't really see the blinders on the side, so I'm going to leave it for now, and then let's just basically go and actually drive, I think that's the thing that we're going to do now. All right, let's do this. I mean, the experience is pretty amazing. I have to say the speakers are absolutely, absolutely amazing. You can see them there. I mean, it really feels very hyper-realistic uh, in terms of what's going on here. And I can see a little bit of stutter here and there. So maybe I might put motion smoothing on again. But yeah, the action is really, really fast. Really amazing. It feels like I'm really inside the cockpit, really going at, uh, you know, 300 kilometers per hour. It's just really, really amazing to be able to be here and have this kind of sensation. There's no latency. I feel that the frame rates are performing pretty well, to be honest with you. Everything is going okay. Very, very smooth at the moment. Let me just uh, leave some of the cars pass by so I can race them and chase them. But yeah, the graphics are really, really good. Um, I can tell that there's a little bit of loss of frames here and there, but that is because of my, most probably my graphics card. And also because, as I mentioned before, uh, it's probably, I would say, 5 or 10% resolution too high in the super sampling on Steam. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the, the car detail in front of me, I don't really see a lot of jagged edges or flickering going on. My car is, um, you know, very sharp. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing to be here. 
The colors are okay. I do prefer the HP Reverb U2 colors, I have to admit. Uh, I find the colors a little bit, um, I don't know, towards the sepia side, I would, I would say, compared to the G2, which are a little bit more natural. Here it feels like there's some kind of filter or something. And we're having a really nice battle here with these two cars, the one behind me and the one in front of me. Look at that guy, it's just there, just behind. Really, really amazing. So as you can tell, everything is working pretty, pretty well, to be honest with you. Whew. Yeah, we got there, guys. We got there. A lot of cars. So what I can actually do is... Um, ooh, all right. I'm going to... Whew, absolutely... Just really, really good. Really amazing. All right, let's exit. Uh, we're going to go to the options and we're going to put even more cars, everybody. Actually, before we do that, just to fix some of the issues, uh, we're going to go into video settings. Um, because now it's at 2760 by 3268, we're going to bring it down. We're going to bring it down to 2240. Actually, no, we're going to bring it up down to 25552 by 3024. So basically bringing it down by about 30%, uh, 20% on my actual screen. So let me just close that, exit. Okay, guys, so this will be the final, basically, settings that I'll be using inside of AMS2. Um, with the Pico, with, sorry, with the Pimax Crystal. Um, so yeah, so let's dive in, start racing, and I'll show you with this, finishing the video, with, we're gonna crank up the settings of the actual cars, put more cars on the track, see how far we can really take it uh, with the Pimax Crystal. Let's do that right away. So at the moment we have nine, so let's just crank it up to double. Let's just see what the difference is when we crank it up to let's say 25 cars just to see whether you know we really get that much difference in terms of the gameplay, latency, and all that kind of stuff. And guys, thank you so much for watching the video. And it's a bit of a long one, but at the end of the day, this is what happens when you do all the various different testing. So hopefully one hour or 20 minutes of watching this video will save you three hours or four hours of setup time for you. So do hit the likes, everybody, and also smash the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of other very cool videos. So we still have no no blinders around, everything is super clear, so let me just click on drive. All right, let's go, go, go. We have a lot more cars on the tracks now, guys. Now we are almost last. Oh, let's take this slow. We don't want any accidents, of course. All right, there we go. So a lot more cars on the tracks. And as you can see, really isn't that much, um, you know, that much difference. All right, just changing the, uh, the view angle from the helmet this time. And I have to say that the graphics are actually pretty good. No real loss in graphics. Everything seems to be all right. The only thing is that there seems to be some ghosting a little bit here and there. So we could maybe make sure... I think motion smoothing is switched on, to be honest with you. All right, let me change the camera angle again. There we go. All right, this is from our side now. Now the sound does change as well. All right, let's see if we can uh, actually go past these three cars. Yes, we can. Oh, no accidents, please. Definitely some ghosting for sure. I can see the wheels kind of, you know, kind of going transparent and also changing, uh, changing shape. They're not so round, the back of the wheels. All right, let's see if we can get those three guys, but I have to say that the gameplay is absolutely amazing. The graphics are very, very good. There's no, there's absolutely no screen door effect whatsoever. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh no, he got me. All right, there we go, guys. Yeah, so guys, I have to say, we managed to get the settings that we need to run this absolutely superbly. You can probably hear the sound of the cars coming out of the speaker. The speakers are fantastic. And we'll talk about the weight, the comfort, and a whole bunch of other things foveated rendering in future videos. So do smash the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of that video. Wow, cranky, it's really, 
It's really loud, isn't it? But guys, do hope you find it useful. Smash the likes if you did, and also to help the algorithm so that we can boost the number of people joining the VR Essentials community. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.